Stopping out for a bite to eat has taken on a brand new meaning with Dying Light, and now it's bigger, darker, and more dystopian sequel. Light and Dark plays a big part in this vampiric tale, least of which includes ray tracing additions for now gen consoles and higher end PC. So let's sample those bits and bites of Dying Light 2. <laughs> Parkouring our way through the console and PC versions here, we have a collection of modes and settings to work through. You can check out the detailed review of this game over on IGN elsewhere. But with the last gen versions not ready in time for the coverage of this review, we instead will concentrate on the Series X, the PS5 and Series S, along with our AMD powered PC in the RX 6800. First up, the three modes that they offer on PS5 and Series X at least from that in-house proprietary Chrome engine or C engine. Now two of the three modes are 30 FPS, with quality the, the mode boasting ray tracing that adds a full contact hardening sun shadows, enabling soft dithered shadows across both static and dynamic objects. These are a big increase in the quality and accuracy of shadows and can drastically change certain scenes due to the upgrade, but they are expensive. In addition, ambient occlusion of a screen space variety and screen space shadows all combine to create more accurate lighting and darker tones in recessed areas in both indoor and outdoor sections. Reflections also offer better quality than other modes and may also be ray tracing based on the PC menus, but these all appear to be screen space in nature, even on the PC. Now, although all these are identical in quality on coverage in Series X and PS5, there are a few minor bugs and crop up in certain elements between each version. You can see some examples on screen, but I'll touch on that later in the review. Next is resolution, which turns these RT shadows off, greatly reduces the ambient occlusion to low now. This lack of depth and grounding of objects in the scene does stand out and again highlight some odd differences between the Series X and PS5. The benefit is resolution, significantly increased over all other modes, but it does come at the cost of some beneficial post effects used to improve the image quality. Then we come to the shared mode across all three consoles, performance, which is pretty much identical on all three aside frame rates and the Series S has the better SSR reflections that PS5 and Series X use in the quality mode, but it does not have any RT shadows. A nice boost is the AO is now back to the level or just possibly one rung lower we see in the quality mode and aside the performance boost here and those cascaded shadow maps used across all objects we do see the shadow filter being dropped here over the SS having the worst shadows of all but in this mode they are all quite low even on PS5 and Series X. The benefit of the ray trace shadows is obvious in many areas including that GI bounce which the game also supports. It does appear to be close to the high setting here from PC which is a mixture of the two but some indoor and outdoor sections have a minimal level to no real improvement and then others really adding radiosity bounce from surface colours and illuminated covered areas with a greater light bounce than any direct source would ever deliver. The PC Best does improve this with more refined RT shadows or at least more of them within the frame, but the improved reflections also help. Oddly though, these are only available on vertical reflections and potentially on certain materials with horizontal water bodies and other flat surfaces using standards SSR which the consoles use. The settings menu in PC is good with a fast, low, high RT settings available on the keyboard from 1 to 3 and then you can tweak certain elements within that such as ambient occlusion, motion blur particles and all of those RT additions. Again though, be aware that it flicks between DX11, DX11 12 and dx12 ultra which means you'll have to restart the game when you're changing some of those settings specifically the rt ones now i hear you ask what is the resolution across these modes then well from the lower end in the series s which only has one mode as covered from all counts it tops and bottoms out at 1920 by 1080 with no signs of dynamic resolution scaling or dsr 
Now, although it is pushing this little 4 teraflop GPU hard, even at that 30 FPS level, it does deliver a decent IQ on a 1080p screen. But on a 4K one, the relatively low pixel count is apparent, but it's not all about those pixel counts, which is why the image can be affected. The Series X and PS5 are surprisingly equal on these two modes as well. Both quality and performance deliver 1080p the same as the S, again fixed on both machines. The shading and effects do not reconstruct back to 4K here either, even with the game's TAA, and ultimately IQ in this mode is pretty much identical to the S on both higher end consoles. That's a shame because it is an option in the menu or the PC to be able to upscale it back up, including FSR. The biggest delta here though, specifically in this performance mode, is it doubles the frame rate on the PS5 and Series X from 30 on the S to 60 here. And that is a welcome boost, both in image quality because of the temporal increase to resolution and also that fluidity. The resolution mode does give us a difference though, with the PS5 being 10% down on the Series X, or the Series X being 12% higher, which depends which way you'd slice that pie. Overall though, the increase from 1080p base is instantly visible, and although far from a drastic game changer in action, largely due to the noisy post post image from radial blur on motion, funneling your view with a peripheral blur, and that chromatic aberration along with per object motion blur in movement and even film grain. But you can at least disable this in the PC option, and obviously on consoles, but you can disable far more in the PC option, including those motion blur settings and others. It does make for a fuzzy in hazy image at times, exaggerated by the low light, lens flare and bloom. And also the sharpening pass on textures is reduced in this mode, which means high frequency texture details do not differ as much as the pixel counts would suggest. Visually though, even zoomed in, the PS5 looks the same as the Series X, but counts show it has a minor reduction as displayed. Something which makes sense based on hardware specs of the higher CU count the SX has and the older DX11 capable engine this is. Remember, it does support DX12 due to the RT functionality as well. But it is very much a game and engine focused on last gen, which it also launches with. And therefore, this would benefit an older engine like this. Sorry about this. What? Sorry about what? <laughs> about that. On behalf of all its whores, bandits, and idiots, I christen you a citizen of Villador. You're about to turn. So, with all that discussion done, what about performance? Starting with the Series S, its one mode at 30 FPS does a good job of keeping close to that action in traversal, but it can present some frame pacing or generally skips into 50 and then 16 milliseconds when running over rooftops, albeit brief and very mild. This is something that was also present in the first game, but it's nothing like that here and hardly noticeable most of the time without this kind of frame rate graph. It does use an adaptive V-Sync on top, allowing the screen to tear full height if the target is missed. Again, brief, but it can happen in GPU and bandwidth fill rate heavy sections, such as with enemies on screen and light and shadow, as you can see here. Those alpha textures and blood, you can drop into the very brief sections of mid-twenties, but it is very minor stints with tearing when it happens. It's not great, but certainly never bad. Most of the time in play, it was a solid 30 FPS, and any issues shown here were fleeting. The team did release a patch mid-review here, which helped. Now, the frame pacing or skips infrequently also pop up less so on the Series X. Again, very, very minor when traversing sections. It can have these brief skips, again, likely memory-related, but still very brief and much rarer than the S. This is true of both resolution and quality modes, but in almost 95% or more of the time, it is evenly paced at 30 FPS and 33 milliseconds. And for my tested section here, it never tears, but I suspect all versions run this, so it's very odd that tears would crop up but if it does I never captured it in any of my sections but I wouldn't be surprised if you could make it tear somewhere. Performance is commendable here but the best mode by far is that 60 FPS performance one. With a clearly large amount of GPU headroom left over it never dropped a single frame from my test which is brilliant. And although this mode does have a lower resolution, it's visually somewhere between the other two, offering worse shadows than either, but better AO than resolution at twice the frame rate. It quickly became my chosen mode, which was not only the performance uptick it offers, but also the fact the artistic choices and sacrifices in that resolution mode do make the differences more nuanced than you would at first suspect. <laughs>
The PlayStation 5 is almost identical. I noted no pacing issues on Sony's machine in both 30 FPS mode, and again, no tears in combat or dropping or stutters at all. It's a perfectly locked 30 FPS, which means if you want RT shadows or sharper pixels, it performs well on this console with no concerns. The 60 FPS performance mode is again like Series X, perfect and locked in all segments, giving us a nice flat frame time graph of 16 milliseconds, which equates to not a lock to discuss. It really is as simple as that. It does the job. Now, there's plenty of headroom left here to spare, and that may seem like a waste to many of you, but with a game that has clearly had delays and affected its delivery path, understandably, this is still the right choice, with game performance being vital to its enjoyment, and the options here are commendable, and I really commend the team for giving us such a rock-solid 60 FPS on both now-gen machines, and even a rock-solid 30 FPS on all of them, even the, the Series S does a great job of it. Ouch! How the mighty have fallen. So what about loading then? Well, it obviously is a small team relatively with a large platform target. And that means they've added a lot to the engine, but with no Velocity Architecture API ready in DX12U just yet. This is demonstrated by them not being able to use the SSDs or power of these consoles, and it clearly means they haven't used the PS5's API either, as we see a very last-gen loading experience. 24 seconds on the Series X and Series S, 36% slower on PS5, and 27 seconds on an SSD-powered PC means that you're probably going to get much better performance the faster your CPU is. It also means that they likely have used the GNMX equivalent here on PS5 to ease such a monstrous development challenge across all those seven consoles, multiple PCs, and even cloud gaming versions. It's a minor loss, but it's still a fast loader relatively, just not one that takes advantage of the hardware here. Of note is the Series S also has more fades to black in cinematics, even though they are real time, which rarely happens on the other two. But overall, once the game is loaded, there's very little loading across the title, certain sections, but not that often. The PC does offer some big boost in IQ and certainly choice of play. Again, the cost and requirement of RT here means my RX 6800 is the only choice to max all these out. My RTX 2070 being heavily impacted at 1080p even with ray tracing on. No DLSS is present here, but it might come later, although upscaling is present in the video menu. The relatively low RAM of this GPU affects it though, alongside that DX12 Ultimate having memory leaks which present as crashes on this machine. The more demanding requirements on memory allocations and bandwidth is not a surprise, both for the newer API and the ray tracing additions within that BDH. This never occurred on my RX 6800, but that does have double the RAM at 16GB. The very best on PC is expensive, and the demands from the team on requirements were not incorrect. CPU-wise, the game is excellent, with my 3600 offering 120 FPS plus in traversal and higher in other sections with accomplished threaded work across all 12 threads. The GPU demands are much higher though, with FSR upscaling again being a saviour here, meaning FSR balanced at 1440p still offers great IQ with those higher ray trace settings on, or 4K FSR balanced at high settings being close to or above 60fps with ray tracing on. These are all a necessity on this card, and even cards even more powerful than this. The level of visual boost you will see will vary, and for me the cost of performance is higher than the benefit, but the choice to pick is best, and at times it can offer a welcome visual boost to a game that can be a varied selection of high highs and low lows. It is a big improvement visually low over the 2015 original. The game does have some minor bugs that can happen with shadow map disparities on PS5 modes remaining high across all modes, higher than Series X at least. Series X sometimes has better shadows as well. Errors in menu descriptions to those memory leaks on DirectX 12 Ultimate. 
Be aware that this does not happen in either DX12 or DX11 renderers, with the game support fully, but you need greater than 8GB at the moment. If you do have any similar issues as I've covered here, then use DX11 or DX12 with older cards, and in AMD's case, remain with DX12, as the AMD DX11 driver is still poor, and here on my RX 6800 at high settings, that match console performance levels at 1080p, we can see free performance improvements moving from DX11 to DX12, upwards of 25%. So do that if on AMD, and you may even gain some in reverse on Nvidia cards, older cards where RT is not an option. As a summary then, the game feels very European, which I love with an RPG character driven narrative that has some excellent motion capture and facial animation. And the story and character driven development of the title will draw many in. Art and design are flamboyant, but mixed with such a big game and simply huge delivery schedule, the level of polish can vary from texture to characters. But the leap up in visual and technical accomplishment is impressive, and the PC does offer greater choice and refinement of all of those assets and aspects. The only issue, I think, is the cost will be too high for many to reach or want to spend over those IQ and performance gains when you tweak those menu settings. The console performance is exceptional and should be applauded how well it runs in all modes across all tested consoles. The Series S does feel a rung down though with no modes to offer and not even a 60fps option which even at 900p and other reduced settings may still be of benefit to some. Maybe something later for the team once they get a break post release. Those last gen versions though may be another story entirely, but for now gen and PC the choice is good and the performance is exceptional. Just be aware of those PC demands on those ray traced options. And that's it for another deep dive into console and PC performance. Remember, if you like what we do here on IGN with these deep dive performance reviews, then keep it IGN, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. By the way, I'm Hakon. I'm Aiden. Nice to meet you, Aiden. Welcome to paradise.